Hey guys, Squatch Reloading here. Well, today we're going to do some changes on this Dillon XL 750. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap out this Dillon Strong Mount to an inline fabrication ultra mount with the quick change setup. And that's kind of where I'm gravitating towards because I'm working on a new reloading room and I want the versatility of being able to move different presses, different powder measures to different uh, plate setups that I'm that I'm planning on my new reloading room. So the reason that I've kind of landed on the strong mount initially was uh, this Dillon bullet tray. I mean, I I work out of acro bins on on my Redding T7, but this this bullet tray. If you don't have a bullet feeder, the way it's set up on the strong mount is awesome. But Dan also makes a bullet tray mount, so you can utilize the Dillon bullet tray on your ultra mount so uh, it just everything fits in the equation right now so we're going to do kind of some comparisons of the strong mount versus the inline fabrication ultra mount if you're on the fence maybe this will help you decide which one uh, that's going to be right for you so let's get into getting this strong mount switched out to the inline fabrication ultra mount all right so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get this light out of the way What's nice, this one's magnet, so we can get that out of the way quickly. We're going to take all of our wrenches here. We'll set those aside. All right, so we're going to get our finished cartridge bin out of the way. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get, get our caliber conversion out of the way here. And then uh, we'll probably pull this case feeder off as well. Right, get this spent primer chute out of the way. Right. Let's get this caliber conversion out of here. Pretty simple maneuver there. One thing to always remember, get these keeper pins back so you don't lose those. Right. Get this feed tube off from our case feeder. And now we're gonna go ahead and work on getting this case feeder off. All right, so we're gonna remove this case feeder just to kind of make th this handling this beast a little bit easier. Now there's two uh, 7 16 uh, bolts that are running at the top and bottom here at the back of the, uh, the press body. But to access this bottom bolt, it's easier to go ahead and remove these two mounting bolts uh, that's, that's basically holding the press on the strong mount. So we're going to remove those so we can access, remove this uh, eject bracket here so we can access that bottom bolt there at the back side of the case feeder. All right, so we're just going to, these are also 7 16 uh, bolts here. And uh, we're just going to unloosen or loosen these. These are the ones that come with uh, the ultra mount, sorry, the strong mount. So we're going to remove those, and I'm going to get this back one next. Okay, now we're just going to pull this back bolt out. We've got a washer in there too. But now what we're going to do is remove that bracket. So now we can access the bolt to our case feeder right here at the bottom. All right, we're going to take our 7, seven sixteen socket here and loosen up the top. I don't need this extension for the bottom, I don't believe. All right, so then again, 716 socket right here. Let's get it loose. And then we're gonna, we can remove these by hand, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm grabbing a hold of this so it doesn't fall over. All right, so we got our bolts removed, and I am going to go ahead and pull the bolts through. And now we're going to remove the case feeder. And it's kind of press fit in there once you get it bolted down. But now the case feeder is removed. All right. So we've got a lot of nuts, a lot of bolts and washers. Um, so now would be a good time to kind of get this uh, stuff organized a little bit so we don't lose anything before we uh, keep moving forward and getting uh, everything else removed. 
All right, so now that we're this far into it, I thought this would be a good time to kind of get some rough dimensions here, uh, comparing our Dillon strong mount to our inline fabrication mount. And from the base of my bench to the bottom of the press is about eight and a half inches. So now let's take a look at the bottom of my bench to the center of my roller handle here is roughly uh, it's just a fuzz under 16 and a half so those would be some good baseline dimensions that we can compare the strong mount uh, to the inline fabrication mount now one thing that you're going to notice right out of the gate and when we look at the dylan strong mount and don't get me wrong this this strong mount is, is, is exactly that. It is very strong. But just to compare the width of material, and if you guys can see that, and I just pulled it off there, but it's about 154 thousandths thick. So let's, uh, when we get the inline fabrication mount, we'll double check those dimensions again and just show you what the differences are. Okay, so we're going to be reusing our bullet tray here. So we need a eighth inch Allen key and a three eighths wrench or socket, whatever you have uh, to loosen this up. We're just going to work through and loosen all these nuts and bolts up and then pull this bullet tray off. All right, so we're about to get our bullet tray off here. And what's nice, we keep all of our fasteners inside the bullet tray. Okay, so to remove this press, we've got uh, two more bolts. We've already removed the ones uh, on the opposite side. So in this process, we'll also be removing that uh, Allen key holder and wrench set. So let's get these bolts off and get this, get this beast off. All right, so we wanna make sure we're holding down on this press because we've got all the fasteners loose and then we're just gonna pick it up off the strong mount and set it aside for the time being. All right, so we got our XL750 off of the strong mount. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the strong mount unbolted from my bench. And then we're gonna assemble that inline fab mount and get it installed here. All right, so we need a uh, 964 Allen wrench right there and a 7 16 inch wrench to put these uh, legs onto our uh, quick change adapter. Uh, plate there that goes on the top. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set this bottom shelf aside It has a, a lot smaller uh, Hardware that comes with it. We'll get to that in a minute these wing nuts uh, set those aside they come with uh, With the kit and this is what you're going to use to uh, utilize the quick change feature So for now we're going to set those aside. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to take One of our legs and basically these are countersunk bolts we're going to set them all in there like so and then we're going to get these legs buttoned up to each one of these bolts all right so i went ahead and uh, put my bolts in just pushed them through and i'm going to set my my legs into place install my washers and we're just going to hand thread these nuts because they are uh, locking nuts. So they're nylon lock nuts. So you're not going to be able to hand thread them all the way down. But you can get a couple threads started. And then we'll go ahead and just kind of let that set aside for now. And we'll come back and button those up momentarily. All right, to put your bottom tray support in, uh, there's two corresponding holes on each leg here. We're gonna need a 3 seconds Allen wrench. Then we're gonna need a 11 30 second, I had to double check there, 11 30 second uh, wrench or socket. Um, so basically this is gonna slide in between the legs. You may have to give some pressure on both sides to get this slid into place. And then the bolts are gonna go in from the side. And then the nut is gonna go on the inside. So let's get this uh, shelf buttoned up on these legs. All right guys, so we have our mount 
fully assembled. And how this is going to work, this plate is going to mount on our XL750. And we'll be able to slide it in just like so, mounting our press to our ultra mount. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to mount this quick change plate uh, to the base of our XL750. And how we're going to do that is we want to make sure that um, we take a look at the back side of the plate. There is countersunk holes here that's going to correspond with these countersunk bolts that's provided by inline fabrication. So the other thing we need to make note of is this uh, tab here on the back needs to go to the back of the press. Um, that way we can slide it into our uh, quick change adapter plate over on the mount that we just assembled. So let's get this plate mounted on our XL750. Alright guys, this part's pretty simple. We're going to take our bolts, making sure that our wide end and our tab is on the back side of the press. We're just going to insert it and then make sure we take a couple washers that are provided in the kit place them on the back side of the bolts along with some nylon lock nuts. You'll need a 7 16 inch wrench uh, for those. So we're going to go ahead and get all of these buttoned up here on the press. Hey guys, one thing I forgot to mention is this is our bullet tray adapter that comes from uh, inline fab if you're running uh, this on an ultra mount and this is going to go on the top side of the press uh, on the front left bolt. So you want to make sure that we get that installed and then go ahead and put our nut and washer on there because we're going to need that for our bullet tray. So guys, I almost forgot two things we need to make sure. If you're running the uh, tool caddy here, we're going to have to leave these nuts off because we're going to mount that there. And then we also need to mount our case eject here on the press. So we need to uh, leave these nuts off, get these mounted, and then button everything up. All right, so let's get our press back on here. So do this pretty simple. We take the uh, tab, tabbed in first. We just slide it into our mount and then lower the front so that our studs go through the holes on our quick change mount. Then all we do is take our wing nuts and we're going to thread those on. And a quick tip guys, do not over tighten these. You just want to get them, you know, hand snug, you know, not super tight. All right guys, so there is the inline fabrication ultra mount on my Dillon XL750 in all of its glory. Let's talk about the install and what the differences are between the Dillon strong mount. All right, the big difference in this uh, setup is uh, this, this mount is nine and five eighths inches uh, with the quick change plate uh, to the bottom of my press is roughly uh, a little over 10 inches and the distance from the center of my roller handle to the top of my bench is about 18 and a quarter. So you're gonna notice a little bit of height difference. Now inline fab does offer like an ultra mount junior, which is gonna be more representative uh, of the Dillon strong mount, maybe a bit shorter. And then they have the micro, which is about four inches. And then they have the flush plate. So your height, whatever height you need, there's going to be an ultra mount or a flat plate that's going to accommodate the press and what, you know, what height that you're looking for. Now, as far as the thickness, um, I will say that the frame is a bit thicker than the strong mount. So we're a little over 200 thousandths there, and I think the strong mount was like 150. So there's 50 thousandths difference in the thickness of the steel uh, in the uh, mount versus the strong mount. All right, so in regards to the bullet tray, in my opinion, the Dillon bullet tray is, is the way to go. Uh, aside from the Acro bins, this is just my opinion. Now, this quick change plate will accommodate the Acro bin bracket like I have in my Redding T7. But in regards to the bullet tray, with the bracketry that comes uh, with this setup, you're going to notice that the bullet tray is higher. It is higher and closer uh, to the shell plate. Now, I think that's probably a good thing. It's going to be less, less range of motion. Uh, I mean, we're only talking maybe about an inch difference, 
but the big benefit is access to this serviceable grease zert. With the Dillon bullet tray on the strong mount, you have to remove the, the uh, bullet tray unless you got a 90 degree uh, grease fitting. But uh, yeah, that makes accessing that grease point a lot easier. All right, another benefit that I found is that on your finished case bin, typically this hangs on this bracket and it just hangs there on your strong mount. But with the ultra mount in this quick change plate, you get some additional support uh, via this extra material right here. So as you, you know, are running a lot of cartridges, it's not going to sag as much or potentially break the tab off uh, with the quick change plate. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around as we switched over my Dillon XL 750 uh, from the Dillon strong mount to the inline fabrication ultra mount. You know, as far as the install goes, it's it's no more difficult than than doing the uh, Dillon strong mount. Uh, so both of those are about the same. There's a little bit more assembly uh, with the ultra mount. And in fact, I kind of like that a little better because I can assemble the mount, I can move it around, and I don't have to worry about those legs doing this. So is is here's the here's the question. If you have one press, say you have an XL 750 or a 550, 650, you have one press and you have a dedicated spot for it, the Dillon Strong Mount is going to serve you fantastic. And it's it's quite a bit cheaper than going to the inline fabrication setup. But where the inline fabrication setup really shines is those of us who run multiple presses. And there's all kinds of different uh, mounting solutions that inline fabrication makes uh, if you want to really condense and consolidate uh, your presses and, and maybe other um, peripherals that you have uh, that you can mount on these quick change plates. Now you can buy an ultra mount dedicated to uh, the press and that's fine. If you're looking for uh, different height solutions, like if you want a taller mount or a mid-level or even, you know, a um, a micro, a four inch rise, depending on how your bench, what your bench height is, you know, you're gonna get more options uh, with the inline fabrication setup versus the Dillon, who they have two different height uh, strong mounts depending on, again, what your bench height is. So that's, those are things to consider. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, you know, getting my new reloading room set up and being able to utilize this quick change adaptability that I've now added uh, to the XL 750. So if you guys like what you see, please hit that subscribe button, get the notifications uh, so you can stay up to date with all of our content. If you guys have any questions, comments, smart remarks, hit me up at my email address, squatchreloading at gmail.com. You can always find me on Instagram and Facebook at Squatch Reloading. And don't forget to check out the Reloaders Network where all these videos are there as well. So until next time, guys. God bless.